Many of you know that Father General created a secretariat for interreligious and ecumenical relations. And that secretariat is not a resident secretariat here at the Curia, but is made up of counselors who are in place uh, at the service of the church, working with different religious traditions or with different Christian traditions throughout the world. So they bring once a year to Father General, uh, in response to questions that he has raised for them, they bring um, materials for a whole week of, uh, of discussion and orientation for Father General and through him for his council. In addition, at a number of times throughout the year, Father General will send the members of this secretariat specific questions that he'll ask them to reflect on. What is the situation of, uh, of interreligious dialogue or relationship, for example, with Islam or Hinduism uh, or with traditional religious beliefs uh, in Amazonia or in, in, or, or in Africa or in, or in, or in Asia Pacific? What, is, what are the most pressing ecumenical challenges and possibilities uh, with, uh, with the Reformed churches or with the Eastern churches? All of these questions Father General with his counselors engages and shares the results and consequences of these discussions with the council and through the council to the relevant uh, bodies of the society. It's up to me to coordinate uh, Father General's relationship uh, with, with that secretariat. And lastly, I'm the liaison person for groups of Jesuits which are autonomous, uh, which have formed b by themselves and direct themselves uh, in response to their own professional and pastoral interests, having to do especially with interreligious dialogue and ecumenism. There's a very active group, for example, of Jesuits among Muslims uh, who meet quite regularly and produce uh, very important studies and, uh, and, and sometimes even monographs. Likewise, there's a, a significant group of Jesuits who work uh, in ecumenism. And my job is also to be liaison uh, for, from Father General to them and from them to Father General. This Byzantine chapel, which is here uh, in our Curia, is powerful evidence for the fact that to be a Jesuit and to serve in our society is not limited to people who come from Latin Catholic backgrounds. The society throughout the world includes, especially in India, in the Middle East, in North Africa, throughout Eastern Europe, and even in parts of North and South America, Jesuits who are drawn from Eastern Christian communities. So the church and the society uh, depend not just on the Latin tradition, which most people think of as the Catholic tradition, but the entirety of the Christian tradition. John Paul II, in one, in one, uh, in one famous quote, said that the church breathes with two lungs, the East and the West. My own autobiographical situation probably makes me uh, sensitive to this, but I'm theologically absolutely convinced that the mission of the church must involve the collaboration <clears throat> and the fraternal, uh, the fraternal work uh, of, the, of the Latin Catholic, the Eastern Catholic, the Orthodox churches, and the Protestant churches, as together uh, with greater appreciation for one another, with the spirit of what we're now calling receptive ecumenism, which is to say, willing to learn from one another, we figure out how to continue to deepen our understanding of the mission Christ gives to us, to enter more deeply into a transforming relationship with him, and to form a community at the service of the whole world. That the Society of Jesus can be a part of this, and play a role as a model for building these bridges of respect and friendship and, uh, and loving, respectful, creative collaboration is, is part of a great dream uh, that I would have and that I think is, uh, is imperative uh, on us as Jesuits. Historically, we have plenty of reason to look back on our relationship with the Christian East uh, with gratitude, there are sins on our part for which uh, we need to ask forgiveness and make repentance, 
but there is also uh, on the part of the society a long-standing commitment and passion for the Christian East. Witness, for example, the Oriental Institute here in Rome, uh, where young men and increasingly even young women from Orthodox and Catholic Eastern communities uh, receive their, uh, their postgraduate education. With great pride, I point out the fact that the ecumenical patriarch, His All Holiness Bartholomew, Patriarch of Constantinople, uh, is a graduate uh, of the Oriental Institute here in Rome. That certainly accounts uh, in a substantial way uh, for his great affection and openness and commitment uh, to ongoing dialogue with the Catholic Church. Uh, it has to contribute uh, to the fact that for the first time ever, uh, this ecumenical patriarch attended the, uh, the installation of the Roman pontiff when, when Pope Francis was, uh, was installed as pope. So this, this chapel uh, is a sign at once of the reality of the society, which transcends the limitations of Latin Christianity and Latin culture, and says that the society is and intends to live out its commitment to Christ as Christ is experienced as the church is culturally incarnated in different contexts. From that point of view, it also represents for us an ongoing challenge. That as in the very beginning of the church's history, there were varied expressions, uh, varied cultural manifestations, and paths to the following of Christ that were authentic, that could claim uh, full integration and authenticity and fidelity, so we continue uh, to dream and to hope and to want to contribute to the thoroughgoing, faithful enculturation of the Christian message in the cultures uh, it, which the church is engaging, whether those cultures are the cultures of India uh, or the different parts of Africa uh, or of the Far East, and even the cultures of Western Europe and Latin America and the States. The ongoing challenge that the church has recognized and to which the society has been committed for generations of proclaiming and strengthening an enculturated faith that must do justice if it's to be authentic, is represented in this beautiful chapel.